sure, sometimes I wish I had a 50 millimeter. Sometimes I really want to shoot with an 85 millimeter. But if I had to just pick one camera, Well, howdy. Welcome to Adventure in Art. My name is Ben Staley. This episode is going to be called More Portraits with the Leica Q2. This guy right here. Doot, doot, doot. Perhaps you have one. Perhaps you're thinking about getting one. Perhaps you're curious. Why am I making this? Well, why is it called More Portraits with the Leica Q2? Uh, way back, almost, shoot, over a year and a half ago, uh, early on in the channel, I made a video called Portraits with the Leica Q2, and I showed all the portraits I had done up to that point uh, after having owned the camera about a year. Uh, portrait photography is my favorite kind of photography, and I travel a lot, so I'm always shooting a lot of people. And 28 millimeter is not the obvious choice for portraits, but I think you can get some amazing results. And I've really learned to love the Q2 for portraits. And uh, I just thought it's been about a year and a half since I made that first video. That is one of the most popular videos on this little humble little seldom viewed channel. So why don't I do a refresher? Why don't I do an update? Why don't I show you some of the portraits I've made since then? I have shot literally, literally hundreds of people since that video. So thousands and thousands of images all over the world. I'm gonna share with you some of my favorite images in the last year and a half since that first video. And if you haven't seen that one, I kind of suggest you check it out. You can see it right there. Now, throughout this, I'm gonna be referencing some of the other videos that I've made. I'll show you some images from some of those. You'll find those videos down in the description because I can't do links to all of them up, 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 up here. It only lets you do like five, so there's more than five. There's actually gonna be well over 200, I think near 250 images in this video. Most of them have never been seen in any of my videos. Even if you've seen all my videos, there's a lot of stuff here that you haven't seen. If you haven't seen any of them, uh, I'm gonna have links to other videos if you like this one that you might like as well with some more images. That's a long introduction, let's get into it. Okay, let's. What, what's our topics? What else should I tell you? I wrote notes because this is gonna be kinda long and I have a lot to discuss and I don't wanna screw it up. The Q2 in general, if you're wondering, if you just came across this and you don't know what the Q2 is, bing, bing. The Q2 is a 40, oh shoot, now I don't remember how big the sensor is. It's 43 megapixel or is it 47? I don't know. It's, it's got a, it, it takes a lot of megapixels, more than you freaking need, I guarantee. It's got a 28 millimeter 1.7 lens. It's also got a macro function. It's a beast of a camera. It's weather sealed. I tell the story of why I got this camera in the first Q2 video. Basically, I got rid of a backpack full of lenses and I just wanted to simplify and I travel a lot and I just wanted one camera. I didn't want to be thinking about what lens I was going to throw on and I thought, let's try that Q2. It had just come out. It was hard to get. I had to be on a waiting list for a long time. I finally got one. It was a shock at first. It's so wide, but I have grown to love this 28 millimeter lens. This lens is really special. And I'm not kidding you. So look closely. You're going to see close shots in this video. You're going to see wide shots. You're going to see everything. I tried to, I tried to really select a wide variety of images. I'm not going too deep into the camera and all that stuff. I did, I've done that before. I, I did a video also bing, about, you know, having the camera for a year and what I thought about it and what I liked and what I didn't like. So you can watch that if you really want to know. Here, I'm just going to show a whole bunch of pictures mostly tell you a couple little stories. But what I like about it is the thing is getting pretty darn beat up, but it's holding together. It's weather sealed. I've had this thing in every kind of weather. It's been kicking around in my backpack. It's swinging around. It's been beat against metal. It's been run over by ATV vehicles. 
it's a remarkably durable little camera and I just love it. I think it's, it's the best all around adventure camera you can get on the market. That's my opinion. It checks a lot of boxes. And if you just need to take one camera, you don't have a lot of space, you don't want something heavy, but you want a lot of options, get a Q2. I could go into that more, but I'm not gonna. Let's get into some portraits. Let's get into some portraits. We're gonna start off, the first half of the video is gonna be kind of doc style, stuff from my travels, people I've met on the streets, some friends, stuff I shot when I was on jobs. I'm a professional filmmaker, so I travel a lot for that, so I'm showing some crew photos, some, some cast photos in some instances, and just some general people that I've run into on some different jobs. The back half is gonna be more um, professional type work, some models, some actors, and some people in more formalized settings, some strobe lighting, some studio lighting, and that kind of thing. So you can see this camera checks a lot of boxes, and you will, at the end of it, hopefully have seen a wide variety of images. I'm also gonna to touch base at the end about the Q3. Maybe, 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 maybe we're gonna see that coming up at some point. I'm gonna talk about my thoughts about a potential Q3. Stay tuned, that'll be at the end. Let's get into this. Alaska. These are some of the most recent shots. I'm putting them right at the beginning. These are some of the most recent shots in the whole video. For the last better part of a decade, I have been working off and on. I work on it for a year or two, then I take a few years off, then I go back to it. It just depends on my availability. But off and on, I've been working on this uh, TV show on Discovery Channel called Deadliest Catch. And I've spent hundreds of days at sea uh, shooting and producing that show. Here are some photos, just candid photos from being out there on this most recent season that I participated in. Starting right off, this is Ronnie, one of the deckhands, and uh, I took the most pictures of Ronnie. I think I, it's hard to take a bad picture of Ronnie. He's just got such a great grin and uh, he's a great dude. These are some of the crew members uh, candidly just living, eating stuff that, you know, we live together and this is what we do. And then some shots, you know, from the deck of the boat and, and just general goings on on a fishing boat out in the Bering Sea. The Q2 really shines in this kind of environment. It's weather sealed, you know, you got salt water spraying on you. It's freezing cold a lot of times. And uh, again, it just handles that variety of conditions really, really well. Now we're gonna get into a little section of uh, some photos that I took on various other jobs over the last year, year and a half. Here's some characters from the summer of 2020 when I was doing a, a development project out in remote South Dakota. Now here's a guy inside of a, an old military bunker. Is this a portrait? Ah, uh, I think so. I freaking dig this image. This guy was so pleased with his outfit and his hat. I just had to take his picture. I asked his mom, she was like, of course. And this dude was sitting out in front of our little motel on his motorcycle. I had to ask him for a photo. This is my good buddy, Kel Vaughn, I was working with out there. I worked with him on a lot of different projects, including Deadliest Catch. This is what I would call an environmental portrait. Now this is on the island of Adak, which is a remote island uh, way down in the Aleutian chain in Alaska. 
And that's Brian, who was one of the cast members of this show we were filming out there for Netflix. There's some LA City firefighters. A couple dudes from another recent job in Nevada for the History Channel. Let's go to Peru. Okay, this is my room. And this is my bathroom. This is my shower. Look what I found on the floor of my shower. Now look how big it is compared to my foot. That thing is like eight inches long. Yeah, how you like that? <laughs> it must be so awesome to travel for work. Wow, you're so lucky you get to travel all the time. I am, but let me tell you folks, it's not glamorous. It is not glamorous. I made a whole video about the photography I did in Peru while I was on a job there, but here's some of the portraits. This is some of my favorite recent documentary work. I love photographing the Peruvian people. They're so awesome. And there's a few friends, crew members in here as well. Now we're going to Oklahoma. I can't freaking remember this guy's name, but he has such a cool face. He had that kind of rugged old school movie star looks and he had, that's right, a freaking bear. You want to see a bear portrait? Let me just put it this way. All the wild animals you see on TV folks are not all wild. I love going to these different parts of the country, different parts of the world, and running into these cool characters and capturing their faces. Uh, it's, it's, it's my favorite part about what I do, honestly, is not the work, but it's like the personal photography that I do around the edges of my work. I love these faces. I love these characters. And when you're just photographing real people like this, the Q2 works great because it's not a huge mirrorless camera or a DSLR. There's not a huge lens on it. It's small, it's unassuming. People don't get freaked out or they don't feel like, oh, I'm getting my picture taken. It's just a small little camera. Let's go to Africa. Should have brought my camera. Well, luckily I did bring my camera and here's some portraits from Africa. Yes, there's a video link down below. I know I keep saying it, but the Q2 just shines for these minimalistic, on the fly, documentary style portraits. I could spend a freaking year in Africa photographing people. I would not get sick of it. This is my good buddy, Charlie. And I did a whole video on Charlie and that's linked down below, but you know, he's a, he's an Alaskan and he's a really good buddy of mine, a brilliant dude, a storyteller, an artist. I love these portraits of Charlie. I love the way the 28 millimeter allows me to get these dramatic angles and to, to just show him in a, in a different way. Here's a few of my friends from a trip to Death Valley. You might have seen that video. If you didn't, it's linked down below. I'm sounding like a broken frickin' record. I'm not here to like plug all my other videos, but there's a lot of them down there. If you're into the Q2 or this style of portraiture, there's a lot more to see.
Here's a few portraits from Mexico, including some of the crew members. And this is Mike. I'm gonna come back to this portrait of Mike at the end. Yeah, dude, metal. So my friend Jimmy has this metal band. He's the singer. He's a brilliant singer and a brilliant songwriter. He called me up and he was like, dude, can you help me make a video? And I showed up in this loft downtown and in the space of about four or five hours, we shot this music video and he edited it. And uh, that's linked down below. And here are some portraits that I took in between filming the music video. And keeping with the music theme, here's another musician who goes by the moniker The Bones of Junior Jones. He played a show in Los Angeles recently and we connected and I photographed him. I don't know what kind of music you're into. Check out The Bones of Junior Jones because he's the real deal. Now we're getting into some actual professional models and actors here in Los Angeles. Some of these people are friends of mine. Some of them have been in videos, which are linked down below. You can just see a variety of lighting. You can see a variety of settings and what the Q2 has to offer. I love these shots of Doc that we captured in downtown LA at like five in the morning. And this warrior cosplay themed shoot that we did last fall is one for the books.
These shots at Julie are all natural light in my studio. <laughs> Perhaps you've seen it if you've seen other videos on my channel. Isaiah is an acrobat and a model, so these are active portraits, which the Q2 does quite well. This is Alex, who is a model and an actress. Natural light with the Q2. Couple shots of Meg at 6 a.m. for that early morning light in my studio. And this is actress Jenna West. I did a whole video where I photographed her on film. I also took some shots with the Q2 while I was doing that video, but you didn't see them. Well, here they are. I've kind of been on this red kick lately where I've been using these red lights and I have these Nanlite Pavo tubes. They're these LED tube lights. I've been cranking them up to red and throwing them on people. Here's a couple shots of a couple different models in my studio with the Pavo tubes and the Q2. All right, the Q2's got a hot shoe, so you can use a strobe. Now, I use a Godox light with a Godox uh, transmitter, and it's for Nikon. Well, Nikon's got the same connections as Leica, so if you have a Nikon trigger, it'll work with a Leica. I may do a whole video on flash photography with my Q2 and what I'm doing, because I'm doing that more and more. I really dig it. That's the vibe. Yes, that's the vibe. <laughs> Right there, just do your thing. This is Assy shot in a studio in downtown LA. She is a super pro model. Most of these I'm using like a five foot umbrella with a big diffuser on it and I really, really like this style of lighting. I like the soft, diffused look, uh, and I like the background just falling away into darkness. I've really, really grown to love doing this, and uh, I don't have a proper studio of my own, but I use my own, the place that I call my studio, which is a little spot under a bridge. Perhaps you've seen it on the channel.
Next, I'm gonna show you some shots of Elizabeth. Uh, she's an actress and a dancer, and I, I took these shots last week. Now, we were doing just some standard stuff, and then she asked very nicely if she could throw some sand in the air while I was taking her picture, and this is what we got. I freaking love these pictures. Are they portraits? Sure. little camera is so versatile it just blows my mind you know I hope I hope this has given you a little bit of clarity about what's possible I hope it's inspired you a little bit I hope it's allowed you to think outside the box I mean the cool thing about photography is the only limitation is you it doesn't matter what you have it doesn't matter what lens you have it doesn't matter what camera you have just get out there and see what you can make with it sure sometimes I wish I had a 50 millimeter sometimes I really want to shoot with an 85 millimeter, but if I had to just pick one camera, I would take one of these Qs. Fine, if, if you can't afford a Q2, get a Q1. They're much cheaper now. And it's the same freaking lens. The lens is the magic part of the camera. This is an amazing little system. If you can call it a system, I mean, it's kind of just a, it's a, it's a fixed lens camera, so I don't even know if it is a system, but it's, it's a genius little camera, and it's no wonder that they've become so popular. I love it. Am I going to get rid of it anytime soon? No. My Q2 is my ride or die camera, digital camera. I'm going to have it until it freaking falls apart, which will probably be sooner than later because I'm really hard on it. I'm not precious with my camera gear. It's got dents in it. <laughs> it's beat up. The paint's getting chipped. For being only just a little over two years old, maybe it's two and a half years old, it has seen some hard miles. What's coming down the road? Is there going to be a Q3? Yeah, I imagine there is, and probably sooner than later. What would I want in a Q3? There's been some rumors online. I don't know. But what would I want? Honestly, in a, in a Q3, I would like them to switch it up and go 35 millimeter. Get it? Q3, 35 mil? That's the only reason why I would upgrade or get a Q3. If it's going to be the same lens, it's probably going to be an upgraded sensor, probably to the sensor that's in the M11. Okay, that's great. That looks like a rad sensor, but I'm doing just fine with this little guy. If they had that fixed lens system in that small body with that EVF and just all the awesome features with, that, with a 35 Summa Lux, even a Summicron F2, I wouldn't be able to pass that up. Like that would be... That would be the perfect Q, Q35. Unfortunately, I don't think that's what's going to happen. I'm sure it'll be another 28 because they've probably invested a lot of tech, a lot of time, a lot of R&D in just getting that system and that lens and the sensors tuned to, to that lens and all that stuff. I don't know. Who knows? I wish Leica would look at how many people I've sent their way for the Q2. I've gotten... Dozens and dozens and dozens of emails and DMs on social media, people saying, hey, because of you, I bought the Q2. So I wish Leica would at least let me try out a Q3 before they come out. Let me test one out. Let me make a video on it. I don't think that's going to happen because I'm not a famous movie star or an actor or anything, but uh, I would love that. Anyways, 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 that's more portraits with the Leica Q2. Now, I told you midway through the video that I would come back to this picture of Mike. Mike was an underwater camera guy on this job that I did in Mexico, and I didn't know him. He knew the rest of the crew, but we became fast friends. We were roommates. We went to sea for like a week uh, offshore in Mexico, like 100 miles out to sea, and uh, on this dive yacht for this job, and Mike was my roommate. We were pretty good buddies by the end of the shoot. I took this photo of Mike on the very first morning of shooting. The sun's just coming up. It's super early in the morning, way down in Baja, Mexico. I love this photo. This is everything that the Q2 does wonderful. I love the colors. I love the way the, the light flares out behind him. I love Mike's grin. He, he was such a brilliant person. He was just, uh, he was freaking hilarious. He was a Neanderthal, but he was awesome. About three weeks after that job wrapped, 
Mike tragically passed away and uh, horribly. You know, that's why, that's why you need to carry a camera everywhere you go, folks. That's why you need to take pictures of your friends and your family and people you meet because there ain't none of us here forever. And we don't know when we're going away forever. So if you're hesitating about taking that picture of your friend or your mom or your wife or your husband or your kids or that cool guy at the coffee shop, take the picture because maybe it'll be the last one. We'll never know. Anyways, I'm glad I did get this and a lot of other pictures of Mike. Thanks for watching, folks. Get out there and take some pictures. If there's something I didn't cover, you've got any questions, hit me up in the comments, uh, send me a message, send me an email, whatever. I'm, I'm accessible. So I love to have a conversation. I love to answer questions, whatever. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, if you wouldn't mind doing all the stuff, that would be cool too. The bing, bing, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. All right. I've yacked enough. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.